everyone welcome back to my channel before i get started with this video i just wanted to say that i filmed this about three or four weeks ago now and you may have seen if you follow me on instagram but i was in hospital so i've only just got round to editing this video um so if i reference christmas or anything like that um yeah that's why so yes uh i'm gonna go straight on into the video now but um enjoy hello everyone welcome back to my channel today i'm going to be doing a sewing vlog and i just fancied vlogging today and chatting to you guys my hair is crazy yeah i haven't done a sewing vlog in a few weeks because i've been working on lots of like festive tutorials and crafty content and like brand work and stuff so um i haven't been on my sewing machine for a good few weeks now since i made the sagebrush top in one of my other recent vlogs i wanted to do some sewing this week um probably won't all fit into one day like i usually do but i'm hoping to make um the bertha cardigan from tilly and the buttons and i don't believe i vlogged it before but it's like one of the easiest 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 makes ever and if you didn't know then i'm modeled for tilly for the make it simple book which is the, it's actually the bertha cardigan that i modeled in the book which is really cool um so that's what i'm going to make today and i've got a really beautiful fabric to make it in this really nice knit fabric from textile express they have loads of different colors of this and i know they sell out quite quickly but they they tend to restock but i just thought that's such a lovely green i'm really loving like green shades at the moment in my wardrobe so i wanted to make another another cardigan in this and the bertha is such a lovely style because it's got like a bat wing sleeve um it's just really slouchy easy to throw on over outfits and stuff like that so that's what i'm hoping to making this video so yeah um yeah i'm just hoping i can get it done this week um but there we go so if you if you're stepping on here and you're realizing i'm obviously chatting away my sewing vlog's very chatty um informal kind of thing um but if you're new to my channel make sure to subscribe give this video a thumbs up i'm really near to like the 45k subscribers mark um and it just blows my mind and it really means so much to me um for every video view and every subscriber is just crazy um so yeah thank you if you enjoy watching my videos it means a lot to me and we're gonna go ahead and make the bertha card again before i do that though i wanted to show you guys my fabric stash because it has grown and where i have not had time to sew anything um i've just got this this lovely selection of fabric staring at me and i'm like oh i will make you into something i promise but um yeah it can be a bit overwhelming i don't know how you guys feel about it like when I have too many fabrics, I feel like it even hinders my sewing because I'm like, what do I do next? But yeah, anyway, um, and for anyone that asks, because usually I get asked, this dress is not me made. This is a vintage f uh, find. I got this in a kilo sale, um, but I absolutely love it. And because it's quite summery, I thought I'd just wear it over like a little roll neck jumper, um, little vintage belt. So I'm going for the granny vibes today or the cottage core as all the, uh, the young kids like to call it nowadays. Um, right, I'll show you the fabrics that I've got. And uh, so this is my corner stash. Forgive the boxes; it's kind of like my my Etsy product and stuff in there. Um, but I've got so many lovely fabrics at the moment, and I'm just they're just waiting to be made into stuff. This is from Grazia by Grazia, I think it's called. Um, it's a really lovely like jersey fabric. Um, I've got some gorgeous viscose from Sony Sunshine, which is just been sat waiting to be made in something. I've had it since the summer this green fabric from uh i think either pound fabrics or rainbow uh fabrics kilburn and then i've got some of your cherry print some mint green jersey which is destined to be a jumper dress or um a sweater like a lightweight one and yeah i've just got some other ones that i've picked up like vintage and stuff like that um this really lovely green which is going to be a christmas dress some uh i think this is french terry fabric Wait, I uh, know what was it called? Um, I can't remember what it's called, but I got this really nice black fabric as well. They're both from Rainbow Fabrics Kilburn. And then obviously I've got this green, which I showed you for the Bertha cardigan. Um, and then a few more here. But that rainbow one I've had for over a year and it's still not made it into something yet. I feel so sorry for it, but I just can't decide what I want to make um, to make the most of it because I just love the fabric so much. I don't want to waste it. But anywho, this is what we're making today and we're going to make the Bertha cardigan. So really quick, simple make. Something you can sort of, if you want to sew in one session, you can get it done in a day. 
Uh, for me, it'll probably be over a couple of days. I also uh, purchased this new one from Tilly and the Buttons, which is the Billy, and it's a lovely jumper dress, which I'm hoping to make in that by Grazier heart fabric. I'm just waiting to get some ribbing for the edges, like ribbing is that stuff at the bottom and, and the cuffs and everything. So I need to do that before I make a start on it, but I think that would be a really cool little jumper dress for um, autumn, winter. And yeah, I think it's awesome. You can make on the back like sweaters there we go you can see it now so you can make a sweater jumper dress or you can make a just a normal jumper but it's got these really cool balloon sleeves as well which is like a nice little feature so i think that looks really nice um so let me know if you'd like a sewing vlog on this one so i am here about a week after i did the intro for this video i ended up not um, having any time at all to sew over the weekend that i was hoping to and then I also have done another video that was gonna go up before this one. So here we are. I have about an hour this morning. It's Wednesday, but I have an hour before starting work to do some sewing. So I thought I would make a bit of a start on this uh, Bertha cardigan. Finally gonna get it done, hopefully. I'm hoping by this weekend, so I actually wear it for going to see a friend. Um, so yeah, oh god, I, I'm just so tired and I cannot wait for this Christmas break. I feel like I need a total refresh, a bit of a digital detox and just kind of, uh, yeah, just some time off really. Um, without going into too much detail because this is a sewing vlog, not a, a lifestyle vlog. But I've just felt really kind of deflated the past few weeks and I have like real highs and then real lows and... I just feel like I need some time off really. So I'm sure a lot of you are feeling the same way right now. Um, but yeah, I could go into more detail about like personal stuff, but that's not why we're here. We're here to sew the Bertha cardigan. I've made quite a few things from the book now on my vlogs and I love it. It's really, really cool. Um, what did I make? I've made the da -da -da -da, the Safia trousers jumpsuit variation. Um, I've done that as a vlog and um, some other stuff as well, uh, of the other pyjamas, the Juno pyjamas. Um, but now I'm here showing you the Bertha cardigan. I've made two already. Um, I did a really cute pink knitted ver version and I've done like a, a jersey version which is quite cool. It's like sweatshirt jersey so it looks really like almost 80s style and I did it in block colours which was really fun. And the instructions are really great. I love this book because again... It's designed to be simple. It's designed for beginners to be able to buy this and, and crack on. So that's what I love about it. It also tells you in these little diagrams how long things will take. So it's really nice. So for me, I've got an hour so I can look and be like, right, cool. Assembling the bodice and the sleeves says around half an hour um, based on that little clock symbol on the side. So I highly recommend it if you've got kids or you've got a fast lifestyle and you're constantly thinking you want to get into sewing but don't know how to fit the time in, then this book's lovely because Tilly has literally designed it as a mum based on people that have fast, hectic lifestyles that want to still make time for sewing. So you can look at a project and it's not going to be as overwhelming because, you, you know, it's all well and good, a lot of us, um, especially sewing bloggers and people putting content out there, can finish something in a day um, and have all these new makes. For a lot of us, it's not like that. As me, me included, to be honest, I've got so much going on at the moment that I'm lucky if I get time to sit on my sewing machine anyway. So I'm just going to do half an hour to an hour of sewing, see how far I get and I'll show you guys. So the first stage is... Uh, da -da -da, to assemble the bodice... Uh, the bodice and the sleeves it's a raglan sleeve uh, which basically means that you attach the sleeve to the bodice and then you sew from the sleeve uh, hem the sleeve sort of like end if you like all the way down like that and it creates like one long seam to make that sleeve and your side body it's really interesting and actually it just makes making clothes so much easier. Whenever you see a raglan, it's like a really nice way to bring something together super quickly. And I love the style. This is like a bat wing style, which is really cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, to note, when you're sewing jersey, uh, just look at like the the preferred like settings for your sewing machine. I like to have mine, um, I'll show you the setup in a second, but 
I like to do mine with a zigzag stitch rather than using my serger, only because my serger is so old, I just don't trust it to do a good enough stitch. Um, it's nice for neatening edges and things, but I haven't sewn jersey with my overlooker before, um, or serger, whatever you want to call it, so I'm not confident to do that, so I just like to sew it on my regular sewing machine with a zigzag, sti zigzag stitch and then neaten the edges with my overlocker or I can do a zigzag to be honest. Um, I, To be honest it depends what I'm feeling on the day. Um, sewing is just for me it's just whatever I feel is easiest at the time or whatever I fancy doing so yeah. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you first the settings of my sewing machine, what I'm doing, what I'm using and then we can assemble this, the pieces. This comes together so quickly so in terms of this vlog it's probably just going to be a lot of me chatting and then showing different elements but honestly this book I so recommend it for beginners. I get a lot of questions about my sewing machine. I use the Janome DKS 100 and it's a really lovely machine, I love it. it. Overall, I'd probably give it a seven or eight out of 10. Um, I'm, I'm really happy that I got it this year. Um, the only thing that lets it down sometimes is I feel like it's not very strong. Um, when I've sewn like denim or corduroy, it does have a little bit of a meltdown, I find. But in terms of ease and simplicity, it's a lovely machine. Uh, it goes from zigzag to straight stitches. It's got all the technical things you'd want, like uh, automatic cutter and all of that stuff. It's great. Um, I, I do like it. It's got built-in buttonholes, which my old Benina, um, the cast iron machine, didn't have. I had to do them manually. So, you know, it's a lovely little machine, if anyone is wondering. Um, so for this make, I've just done a test stitch. Um, and I've set the the tension, this is the foot tension, on uh, t-shirt jerseys and lightweight jerseys, you would put it on one. But for this, because it's a thick knit, I've got it on two just to kind of let the foot ease it through a little bit easier. Because the stretch, it, although it's a stretch fabric, um, a stretch knit, it's uh, it still needs a little bit of give through the feet, the feed dog. So I've put it on two and that worked really well. Tension's on four. I don't tend to move the tensions that much, if I'm being honest. Um, it kind of just stays on four. And then I've got a jersey uh, ballpoint needle in the sewing machine as well. So make sure you check what needle you need. And then I'm using this really cute colour thread. I had to wait for this to come in the post. Um, it's this one, the Gutaman, Gutaman, whatever you want to call it. Um, just a sew everything polyester thread. And it's in the shade 821. That kind of matched quite nicely to my make. So yeah, really pleased. So I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, pieces together now. Um, it's this bit that I need to do first. So yeah, that's what we're going to do. So as a little tip when I'm putting together the pieces, uh, it can be a little bit confusing like what side goes to what side of the back bodice. So I keep the bit of paper on my pieces and then I check. So this is the back bodice seam of the sleeve. So I make sure that when I do it, I take all the pins out of my bit of pattern and then I can make sure that I lay it on top where it needs to go. Apologies about the fluff on my carpet. Um, all my certain projects just stick to it. So this is the back uh, body. So I lay it flat on the floor or a flat surface. You do it on a table if you've got a big enough table. I don't. So I just do it on the floor like this. And then I can just lay out the sleeves where they needed. Um, and you can kind of see that's how they've done it in the book as well. It just makes it a little bit easier to you know that you're matching it up in the right way bit messy but you kind of get the idea what I'll do is I'll uh, flatten that out flatten that out um, right side facing upwards like this and when I know that I've got the right edges sort of next to each other I can turn it around on itself match up my seam pin that side together and then stitch it you've 
stitched it, um, you can go ahead and serger the edge if you want to and, and neaten it with your overlocker. However, because my overlocker is, is threaded with white thread and it's quite exposed on this mate because where it's like flappy you can kind of see on the inside um, of a cardigan, I'm actually just going to trim it back and then do a zigzag on the edge of it. Um, there's some nice settings on this machine actually, so I might try and do like an edged zigzag or something um, but to do that I'm just going to first uh, attach the other side just to do it while this machine set on a, the same stitch lengths and stuff um, and then I will neaten the edges. So now that side's pinned I can go ahead and stitch this one together as well. Get so much of it on the table so it's flat but it's a bit bulky. <laughs> So now that's done, I'm just going to trim my seam allowance um, as nicely as possible. I'm not going to go too close to the edge because this fabric kind of unravels a little. Um, but I'm just going to do like almost, I don't know, a quarter of an inch off the edge. Um, essentially just a sliver. <laughs> also, if you are watching this as a beginner sewer, then one thing I would say is I get a lot of questions on Instagram and stuff from people asking like what machine would you recommend, um, what patterns would you recommend for beginners, that kind of thing. Um, I actually put all of these sort of like answers if you like into like a blog post and it is a blog post for, for beginners and as well as that I have a YouTube video about sewing for beginners as well so I will link both of them below um, as yeah they're just like little handy guides uh, just a quick overview I guess um, of what I would probably say to someone if they message me about it so it's all in one place for you guys um, so you can go and check it out because I think this year a lot of people have realised that they would like to start making their own clothes or just like get into sewing and of some kind even if it is just you know the odd little thing um, so hopefully those tips will help if you are a beginner right so that's that done I'm actually going to I think I'm going to do a normal zigzag 1.5 yeah but I might make the zigzag like a 3.5 width just to make it a little bit longer or wider rather um, and then just do the the edges of this just go as close to the edge as possible so you probably can't see it because obviously I've got this like nice color thread that matches quite nicely but what I've done is I've just oh, I've just done a zigzag on that edge so it will like neaten it um, and it, it makes it less like, you know, unlikely to unravel in, um, and break that kind of stitching. So let's do the other side. Cool. So that's done. And then the next stage, what time is it? Da -da -da. Right, I've got about 20 minutes left of my sewing clock. So the next step is to attach uh, the front bodices over the sleeves so I'm going to do that see what I'm doing for time and then that will probably be it for my sort of sewing session today um, same again it, you just lay lay this piece out that you've done and match up your front bodices to your sleeve side so I'm going to go ahead and do that and attach in the same way I'm back the light is a little bit weird so apologies it's obviously quite bright through the window but then like dark in my room so I'm like half and half uh, shadow on my face right now but I thought I would update you guys on the Bertha cardigan don't know why I'm speaking in a weird voice uh, we've got to this stage where the arms the sleeves are sewn together and the body is kind of done uh, and then all I need to do now is essentially the bottom cuff the hem band rather, the actual t correct terminology. Um, so I've got to do the hem band and the neck band that goes all the way around the front and then the cuffs, the sleeve cuffs. So essentially three more steps to do for this make and then it's done. It's really simple and it comes together super quickly. The one thing I've noticed actually making this is it probably would be sort of a nicer uh, kind of fit and finish if it's in lighter fabric so I've made lighter fabrics before and they're I've, you know I've not had an issue with them let me take this off um, but because this is quite thick and quite rigid I don't know how the bat wing 
kind of look so if I'll put it on now and you can see kind of how it looks so far and obviously it needs the the added calf and the bottom and like everything else but in terms of the fit it, it sits kind of cool it's kind of slouchy I think because it's in this ribbed kind of knit fabric it kind of gives it like a more casual almost like sporty look about it I think rather than you know a cardigan it's kind of like I don't know it's cool it's quite cool for like loungewear and stuff um I like it though it's nice um, so yeah, I'm just going to have to go ahead now and do the extra bits and it's quite straightforward to be honest um, in terms of getting them on. So yeah, and then I've just been finishing it with a zigzag which has neatened it n nice enough sort of thing. You could do, obviously, like I said, you could serge it or overlock it. Um, I'm just doing a zigzag this week and I'm hoping to have it ready for tomorrow because I'm going to see my friend in central London, which I haven't been to central London. I've been twice this year. Thanks. When that's on, you want to do what we did with the inside and just trim back that seam allowance. This is like the bulkiest <laughs> seam. <laughs> can you see? It's like super, super bulky. So I'm going to trim that right down and then we can just overlock it um, and just neat it and it all up. So yeah. Also, as this is the last kind of video of the year, um, I thought I'd ask you guys what you'd like to see in 2021. Um, are there any sewing patterns that I haven't yet done a sew along with that you'd like to see? I've obviously got all of the Friday Pattern Company patterns, so um, I'm hoping to do some more vlogs with them, um, especially as I'm, I'm hoping to sew the Adrienne dress. And if there's any others that you want to see as well, then let me know because um, there's lots I could do with them. And yeah, I just love to hear your feedback. Like, what what sewing videos would you like to see on this channel? Set up to me, and you o'clock I've been sewing for a couple of hours now um, I'm at the last stage which is sewing the cuffs onto the sleeves the actual uh, cardigan is pretty much all done um, so it's, yeah just the cuffs to do and it looks so cute I've tried it on but I want to savour the final look of it um, to show you guys so I'm gonna go ahead and sew these cuffs on it's a bit fiddly this bit to be honest so I might just take uh, this off um, might help in order to get round the cuff of the sleeve and I've just got fluffy bits like everywhere <laughs> um, but yeah so I'm going to sew this and I'll show you the finished result <laughs> 